Hey folks, I'm John P. And I'm Trace D. And we're here at the National Pinball Museum in Washington, D.C. And this is Geek Beat TV. Man, this place is huge. Right, there are 900 machines in David Silverman's collection. That's ridiculous, when did he start doing that? College, he actually used to sleep underneath pinball machines in his dorm room. I would do that, I would definitely do that. It was kind of cramped though. Let's go see how this thing gets started. All right. Come on guys. Here we are at the history of the pinball machine. This is pretty amazing, let's go check this out. Come on in here. So we're like stepping back into 1977 in France and uh, those little French guys were pretty ingenious back then. They invented this table. I guess they said, hey, let's put some holes here and uh, we'll make these little balls and then we'll see who can roll the uh, ball down the table and get it to go in one of these holes. And uh, that's, the, that's the first pinball machine, if you will. But then you know what? Follow me, follow me. They, 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 they said, you know what? That's not quite difficult enough. Let's move these things onto a ship. So we're like in a mock-up of the captain's quarters of, a, of an actual boat here. And you'll notice another version of the table. Now they said, let's make it a little tougher. They put this bridge in here, uh, you know, so you've got to actually roll it and get it through there. And then they started adding all these pins and little rails. And now you got bells. So if you can get it down in through here, and I guess if it bounces off here and goes in there, you can get a little, you know, reward for your for your trouble. So you can actually see the evolution, you know, getting to to where you're, you know, m more along the lines of the pinball machine that we know today. So here we are, a hundred years later. We were in 1777. Now we're up in 1870s, and this is the first American pinball machine. Actually, looks kind of like a Game Boy of the 1870s. It was a little bit portable, had the bells and whistles that you would get from the old school machines. But now they're not on ships. You can take them with you wherever you go. And then over here, we've got a test plunger, and you can see how it would have worked and how they would have designed it. That's a pretty powerful little thing. All right, now we're moving into the 1900s, and we've got the uh, end of the bar games, and it's also a pinball style. And then you can see, just like today, where you'd have that right at the end of the bar where the guy can come and sit, pull up a chair, and play pinball for the, all e the whole evening while he's uh, drinking his drinks. And then moving over here, we get into like modern day pinball, where we get electronics, we get all sorts of other stuff. But before that, we got to invent the flipper. We don't even have flippers yet. All right, so here we are now. We're at the invention of the flipper. Sweet, I want to try it. Go for it. Uh, look, one of the coolest things about the pinball machine uh, museum, you get to play the machines. Okay, let's see. You push this in. Okay, now you you push this. Oh, watch this. You push this in. The ball's gonna pop up over here. Sweet. Okay, let's let it rip. Should test the flippers. Oh, they're working. Hey Norm, guess what? This is what they did before flippers. So imagine a pinball machine with no flippers, Trace. This is pretty awesome. Yeah. I mean, so, it looks like they have like a panel underneath where the holes would line up and the ball would fall through and that would depend, depend on how many points you get. Yeah, I guess that's how you reset it. Like you put your coin in, you shove that thing and it looks like, it looks like the little uh, board underneath would slide back so the balls could drop and reset. I, I'm assuming, and then when they reset, what you do is you probably you probably like push this to release. There's a little lever here. You kind of flip it up, and it drops a ball into the the normal chamber. And now the only control you really have is how much power you're going to put on the release. So I guess you're going to try and get the ball to come up there, and uh, you know just kind of gently drop through one of these. I could still see it actually being just as addictive as any other video game because you're going to want to do it right and you're not going to do it right the first time so you have to keep feeding the machine your money, you know? Right, right. I mean, and the fact that it's so simple and that it's just one thing that you have control of and at that point the ball does whatever gravity lets it do. Yeah, ingenious actually. But I bet they took a lot of money with these bad boys. Let's see the, the later versions. Hey John, come take a look at this one. This is the first one to have the pop bumpers. You remember oh. we were talking about the other bumpers were a little weak? Yeah, yeah. These are the first ones to have the springs in them. So oh, so now when it hits the spring, 
It ricochets that ball out with some serious velocity, huh? Yeah, shoots it back out there. Nice. It's called the Saratoga. The Saratoga. And look, check this out. It's got some uh, the fine looking ladies. Now we got the hot chicks. Up at the top. Uh, I bet you psychologically speaking, the addition of these uh, lighted panels in the back, uh, plus the hot chicks, made people want to play them even more. I would think so. I mean, it makes me want to play it. I yeah, don't have, I won't, I don't I don't have 50 it. cents, though. Do you have 50 cents? Uh, all I got's cash. All right. All right, Trace, that was awesome. But you know what the bad news is? They're closing. When are they closing? They're going to close on July 3rd. Oh, man, that's a shame. You know if they're opening again? The guy says that they have a few places lined up in Virginia or Capitol Hill or somewhere else, but they're definitely going to reopen. Uh, excellent, excellent. Well, I bet you when they do open, you guys need to come here and check this place out because, to be honest, I thought it was going to be a little, you know, cheesy, yeah. but it really exceeded my expectations. They got a lot of machines. You can play a bunch of the old ones for free. You can help support the museum by playing some of the newer ones for pay. And uh, generally, it was just very cool. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> Sweet, two thumbs up. All right, guys, if you guys enjoyed watching this video, you give it a thumbs up on YouTube and subscribe at youtube.com forward slash geekbeatv, and we will see you later. Hey, it's John P., and I'm here with a very sexy beast, Trace, <laughs> the man. Are we ready to go?